Maybe you would do a little bit better if you actually learned about the history for Super Mario. No, it wouldn't help you at all probably, but I figured it'd be a pretty good intro for this video, in which we'll be talking about the history for both Super Mario and Donkey Kong and how they got their names. But before we get started, I first want to talk about our partner, Audible. With Audible, I actually listened to an amazing audiobook, Super Mario and How Nintendo Conquered America. It helped me research for this particular video. So if you're interested in listening to a whole bunch of great audiobooks just like that one, click the link in the description below, www.audibletrial.com slash Andres Restart. It's a great package. For 30 days, you'll get a free audiobook. Check it out. But without further delay, everyone, let's get started. Mario's origins date back to the early 1980s, before even the NES era where Nintendo became so dominant. This was a time where Nintendo wasn't really a major player. Sure, they had somewhat of an arcade presence in Japan, but they had no establishment in North America, but they wanted to. So in order to find some success, they decided to try and mimic their distribution network that they had in Japan in North America. But in order to do this, they needed a successful cabinet game, an arcade game, and at the time, their best bet was Radar Scope, which is basically Nintendo's version of Space Invaders. So they went ahead and they put together 3,000 Radar Scope cabinets and they sent them over to North America. However, they were only able to find a home for 1,000 of them, leaving 2,000 in a warehouse somewhere in Elizabeth, New Jersey, collecting dust. The game wasn't selling and Nintendo couldn't really just afford to give up on this investment. So, Minoto Arakawa, the first president of Nintendo of America and son-in-law to Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi, had an idea so they could still make good on their initial investment. His plan was to change the game without having to ship in new cabinets, using conversion kits. Back in the day, it was basically a way to update arcade games, kinda like DLC for games now. Except instead of just updating all the radar scopes with new content, they decided to create a whole new game. And this game was Donkey Kong. At the time, the rookie, Shigeru Miyamoto, was made responsible for designing Donkey Kong. This was going to be his very first big hit. He wasn't very experienced at the time, so Gunpei Yukoi worked alongside him to get the job done and teach him on the way. Initially, President Yamuichi wanted the game to be based off Popeye. This would have helped the game to sell a lot better in North America because they were trying to create a game unlike Reader Scope, which hopefully would have appealed much more to American fans at the time. However, Nintendo was unable to get the rights for it, so they had to go in a different direction. But Miyamoto was really just more interested in the motifs from Popeye. He was more focused on making a game about a hero saving the girl in distress from a big bad guy. He had the idea to make the villain based off King Kong, which made sense since the game was meant to appeal to the United States and King Kong was very popular at the time. This did however lead to a legal battle with Universal, but Nintendo did eventually win the case so it all worked out. Miyamoto really liked the idea of naming a game based off the villain. Hence the title, Donkey Kong. It was this unorthodox kind of thinking that led to games like Metroid or The Legend of Zelda, and in the case of Legend of Zelda, they decided to name the game after the princess you save rather than the hero or the villain. But at the time, besides Donkey Kong getting his own unique name, the hero and the damsel were just named Jumpman and Lady, respectively. Once the game was completed and the conversion kits were ready, the cabinets needed a new design to match Donkey Kong instead of the old designs they had for the old arcade cabinets, so multiple decisions needed to be made about the characters and their backstories and even their names. Because of the way the pixels were designed so Jumpman could stand out properly, he had overalls that led to the decision to make his initial occupation a carpenter rather than a plumber. So when it comes to the story for the name changes for both Lady and Jumpman, it's really quite charming. Don James was the manager for the warehouse where all the radar scope cabinets were being held, and he had a wife named Polly. As a thank you, especially considering how behind Nintendo of America was at the time on rent, they renamed Lady as Pauline after Polly, the warehouse manager's wife. Supposedly, during the business meeting where Arakawa and the others were trying to come up with a name for Jumpman, the warehouse owner, Mario Seagal, who had a similar looking mustache to Jumpman, barged in complaining about rent. 
Apparently, he was so angry, it seemed as if he was jumping like Jumpman himself. Once he finally left the meeting he interrupted, everyone joked about how they could name Jumpman after Mario Seagal. And the name Mario stuck. Donkey Kong released in 1981, and as many of you know, the rest is history. Nintendo took the world by storm, and that was the beginning of the most iconic video game character, Super Mario. And that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for listening and watching. This is Andres Restart. That's Bandana Charmander. And we'll see you all really soon. Bye.